Hello everyone. This video will go over the AP Stylebook section on punctuation. I know that the entire section of AP Stylebook is long and it has a lot of rules that can be confusing. So I really just wanted you to give a quick once over of the material so that as we get into more of the specific rules on punctuation, you will be better prepared. Punctuation is really important in writing. Not using the right type of punctuation can completely change the meaning of your sentence. It's the difference between eating grandma and asking grandma to eat. Punctuation with AP Stylebook is all about clarity. If it doesn't make the sentence more clear, then it's likely that that punctuation should not be there. So always remember that you're seeking clarity when using punctuation. There are many different types of punctuation that AP Stylebook has rules on. And in fact, this isn't even all of them, but these are the main types of punctuation. Uh, we're gonna be covering a lot of these in greater details in coming weeks. And so I don't want you to feel like you have to know all of these right away, but this video is meant to provide a uh, overview of all the types of punctuation. So as you get more in depth on the rules and how to use certain types of punctuation, you understand uh, broader types of punctuation first. So the first type of punctuation you're probably all familiar, familiar with, it's a period. Periods are used at the end of a sentence. Um, even if a question is more of a suggestion, we would still use a period. You know, why don't we go? is actually more of a statement than it is a question. So even though it has a question word why, we would use it because it's the end of a statement. We also use uh, periods as uh, at the end of indirect questions. So he asked what we should have for dinner. Even though he is asking a question, the sentence overall is a statement. So we would use a period instead of a question mark at the end of this. We use periods to abbreviate as well, um, such as taking the word doctor and abbreviating it, abbreviating it to DR period. We will be going over abbreviations in week three. So don't worry about those so much right now. Just know that periods are used within abbreviation. We also use periods after initials within names, such as John F. Kennedy. If the initials appear back to back in a name or proper noun, don't put a space between them, such as uh, how I've done T.S. Eliot here. If the full name or organization is only letters, then you don't put periods between it, like FBI or JFK. There are some exceptions to this rule, which we'll go over more in the abbreviations section. After numbers or letters, you're going to use periods when they are part of a list, such as first, you know, number one, read the chapter. Second, watch the video. You would put periods after one and two, as I've done here. Periods almost always go inside the quotation marks, um, and there is only a single space after a period. I know that some uh, creative writing and English literature styles ask you to put two spaces after a period. For media writing specifically, you are only doing a single space once you end a sentence. For a question mark, you're really asking a question and it needs to be a direct question. An indirect question, if the entire sentence is still a direct question, would use a question mark. So did he ask what's for dinner? Because we're asking, did he ask, this uh, even the indirect question of what's for dinner is part of a larger direct question. Therefore, we would use a question mark at the end of this sentence where, as you may remember, he asked what we should have for dinner uses a period because that indirect question is part of a statement as opposed to a direct question. So think about what the whole sentence is. Is it a direct question or is it a statement? And then use the appropriate punctuation. You're only going to use one question mark most of the time, even if two questions are being asked. The difference is if uh, you want emphasis, such as, did he plan the riot for people to be hurt? Like you're trying to emphasize the point that planning a riot would involve people getting hurt. 
Um, and so therefore you might separate it out with two question marks, but do this sparingly. We don't use question marks for indirect questions, which we just talked about. And in a question and answer format, you're not going to use quotation marks. Instead, you will use colons after the Q and A, and then uh, the appropriate question mark at the end of the direct question. You, uh, when using a question mark with quotation marks, you're going to use the question mark inside the quotation marks if it's part of the sentence. So what's for dinner is the quote, so therefore it's going to go inside the quotation marks. However, if the quoted material isn't actually a question, you're gonna put the question mark outside of the quotation marks, such as who wrote Gone with the Wind. Gone with the Wind is not a question, it's a title. And so it is put in quotation marks, but the question is really who wrote it. So you're gonna put the question mark outside of those quotation marks. An exclamation point is meant to be emphatic. It provides a high degree of emotion. And so therefore we as media writers want to avoid it as much as possible. Uh, using an exclamation point usually shows that you have some kind of bias or opinion, so therefore we try to avoid it. But of course, people that we are quoting may use uh, exclamation points within their writing or within their statements. So if we're using them as quotes, you're going to place them inside the quotation marks. Don't use a comma or period after an exclamation point because the emphasis of the exclamation point takes the place of uh, ending the sentence with a comma or a period. A semicolon is kind of in between a comma and a period. You provide more of a stop in train of thought than you would with a comma, but you give less of a stop than a full period would provide by using a semicolon. So semicolons are used primarily for two different purposes. First, to clarify a series when items are longer or if you have information that includes commas within it. Um, and you would always use the semicolon before the final and, just as you would a comma in AP Stylebook. So here's an example. He has three children, including Daniel Devers of Alabama, Jennifer J of Florida, and Jason Fortner of Georgia. If I just said, including Daniel Devers, Jennifer J, and Jason Fortner, we'd probably use commas to separate that list. But because there are already commas within the information given, I'm going to use semicolons to give further clarity of where the break in each item is. So again, we always go back to this idea of, does the punctuation help uh, the understanding of what's going on. And in this case, a semicolon provides more of a break than a colon than a comma would. The another common use of a semicolon is to link two independent clauses without a conjunction. So today we're learning about space. Astronomy is a really cool subject. These are both, both of these sentences talk about the same idea. So you might want to combine them with a semicolon rather than using a period. And then just for brevity, um, you might not want to use a conjunction like and, but, or, or, which would involve using a comma instead. Um, so it allows you to combine two sentences without a conjunction and without a full stop of a period. If the first independent clause has a lot of commas, you can use a semicolon and a conjunction. AP Stylebook provides some examples of this, but again, this is really rare. If you're getting that um, convoluted with all of the commas and semicolons, it's probably just best to rewrite the sentence for clarity. You usually want to break uh, a single sentence that is broken by a semicolon into two separate sentences because, again, we're, we're trying to be brief, we're trying to be short, and we're trying to be clear. And by using a semicolon, you're really just extending the length of your sentences. If you're using a semicolon, make sure you place them outside of parentheses or quotation marks. A colon is a little bit different than a semicolon. Make sure you know the difference because they are used for different purposes. Remember a semicolon looks like this, 
and a colon is just the two dots. Uh, there are a couple of different uses for colons. The first is emphasis, such as he had only one love, football, right? Um, and so you're kind of emphasizing the word football here. Uh, we also use colons with lists, lists, which you can see the AP style entry for lists for further clarification on how to do that. There are specific ways to use colons with certain types of listings, such as time elapsed, time of day, and biblical or legal citations. We'll be talking about a few of these in uh, greater details, especially uh, time of day a little bit later. Dialogue and Q&A uh, will use colons to offset the speaker. Uh, in the previous example that you saw, you know, I put Q and then colon and then what was said and then A colon what was said. Very similar for dialogue, which is what I'm showing you here. Remember, we don't put quotation marks around dialogue or Q&A. You don't use uh, colons to introduce a quote. Instead, you're going to use a comma. Uh, the only difference is if there's a very long quotation within the paragraph. Uh, we don't do this very often in journalism because, again, we're trying to be brief. So you can refer to your AP style book if you ever come across this. If you're using a colon uh, after a quotation mark, make sure you put it after and outside of that quotation mark. And finally, uh, capitalize the first word after a colon only if it's a proper noun. If you look up at the emphasis example, you'll notice that football is lowercase because football is not a proper noun. But if I were to say, you know, uh, the Alabama Crimson Tide, that would be a proper noun and that A in Alabama would be capitalized because it's a proper noun. The comma is probably the most misused punctuation out of all of these examples that we're talking about. In fact, it's so difficult to navigate some of the rules of comma placement that we're going to devote two different days of AP homework to it in weeks four and five. Again, there are many uses for commas, but the main idea is that a comma is meant to make the reader pause as they read. Uh, clarity is the biggest rule with commas, so if omitting or taking out a comma would lead to confusion, use it. If keeping it in leads to confusion, don't use it. So that's kind of the overlying rule of commas, uh, but again, we're going to get into the specific rules of comma use in later days. Apostrophes are primarily used for possessives and omitted letters and figures. We're going to talk about apostrophes and possessives within a lesson on week four, so you'll get more of those rules, but that's what it's primarily used for. A dash is different from a hyphen. A dash uh, is longer than a hyphen. A hyphen is the shorter one. Um, and you're going to put a space on both sides of the dash when you use it to break apart uh, the words from what is being offset by the dash. You want to avoid dashes whenever possible because a lot of times they don't come across and copy very easily. But dashes can be used for an abrupt change in thought. They can also be used for a series or list that appear within the middle of a sentence. And most commonly, they're used for attribution of quotes or date lines uh, within the uh, headline or, um, sorry, the lead of the story. A hyphen is shorter than a dash, and it's meant to join two or more words together. We're going to be going over hyphenated words uh, in week five, um, so I'm not going to go into the specific details. Just remember that a hyphen is used to bring words uh, together, where a dash is meant to separate thoughts apart. Finally, a slash is uh, preferred when you have two dichotomous items or two items that uh, are kind of opposites of each other, like and, or, either, or, over, under, red state, blue state. You're not going to put a space on the side of the slash um, because, again, you're trying to show uh, the dichotomy of those two items. And finally, um, if you're quoting 
who are using lines of verse, whether that's lyrics or poetry or whatever, you would use spaces on both sides of the slash. But again, that is very rare. Typically, you don't want to use spaces with slashes. Brackets should not be used in news. They cannot be transmitted over news wires. A news wire will not pick up a bracket. And in broadcasting, brackets are used within scripts to give commands to the director, such as QCAM1, which would tell you to get a close up of camera one. So the use in the script or the copy is very confusing. So do not use brackets when you're writing for media. Parentheses, on the other hand, are uh, typically only used with logos or to add uh, proper names for something. Otherwise, you want to avoid them. A lot of times uh, they are misprinted and it can lead to confusion. When you're using parentheses, it's usually a good clue that your sentence is getting a little too complicated. You should use commas or dashes to offset something instead. If the information in the parentheses is not part of the sentence, you're going to use the period outside, such as if you're uh, quoting an APA uh, for a citation, you would use it outside. If the information is part of the sentence and it's a full sentence, the period is going to go inside. But then if you're using a complete sentence inside a larger complete sentence, you will not capitalize the first word, nor will you end with a period. However, please keep in mind that if you have two full sentences inside one sentence, again, it's probably too complicated, so you should think about rewriting the sentence altogether. Quotation marks are used to get direct quotes from another person. There are many rules about quotation marks, which we'll discuss, and quotation marks are very important to know for media writing styles because we rely on quoting people as sources so often. So we will go over this in week six, but know that quotation marks are used to quote direct words. Ellipses um, are three periods that have two spaces between them. It indicates the deletion of two or more words from something that you're quoting, but you should never take away words if it changes the meaning of the quote. Another way to use an ellipses is if you're trailing off in your thought. So if you wanted to write like I was, you know, and you're having a squirrel moment where you're really distracted, then you're going to use the ellipses to indicate that. A punctuation always comes before the ellipses if you are uh, indicating the deletion of things that happen after that full sentence. And then don't use ellipses at the beginning or end of a quote, only use if you're taking away or condensing words in the middle. So if I was quoting uh, Angelica from uh, Hamilton, for instance, I would want to use the second sentence, uh, even if there are words before or after those lyrics, because I'm not taking away words in the middle of what she's saying. I couldn't help myself, guys, work. Um, so that is a brief overview of how to use punctuation uh, through AP Stylebook. Again, the next few weeks of AP homework are, are going to be dedicated primarily to using punctuation properly. Um, so if you don't feel like you have a good grasp on all the rules yet, please don't worry. We're going to get there together. Um, so I've provided a brief overview of punctuation uh, to do for homework for Wednesday, and then make sure you read chapter five by Wednesday as well. Monday, we have no class material because it's Labor Day, so I hope you guys have a really safe and enjoyable holiday.